Welcome back everyone to Talking It Out. We have a very exciting show for you today. We have Kendall Long on the show and we're gonna talk about all things Paradise, her relationship with Joe and get into some tea with her. So, but you know how we do first of all, we got to do our hot takes and I wanna throw it to Mike real quick so he can tell me what's on his mind. I can't wait to talk to Kendall for one, but this last episode of Paradise, I, I, dude, a lot, a lot of things that we got to unravel there. But first the and foremost, <laughs> first and foremost, one of the things that caught my attention that I haven't seen people talk about on IG is that, like, we know what Brenda did, we know what Piper did, we know how Natasha was uh, taken advantage of, and but no one was saying things like, because a lot of a lot of the guys on there were friends of Brendan, but they weren't calling Brendan out. Correct. You know? Yeah, they weren't calling him out at all. And it's like. I, I got an issue with that. Like, it could be my best homie, but we put each other in check as well. We tell each other when we're doing wrong because that's what friends are technically for. Friends are supposed to make you get better and not not just only have your back. And so a lot of the guys on there, they seem like they were doing a disservice to their friend, Brendan, to me, by not calling his ass out. But how do you do it in a way where, you know, you confront the person because at the end of the day, you're good friends with him. Right. Like that's your boy. Like you essentially now, granted, you want him to do the right thing and respect his woman. But at the end of the day, it's like you have the longer relationship with that guy. So it's like, what happens if it affects that relationship? And we all know the saying that you're friends. We know, we know the saying. It's What's the, the bro, saying? Bros before the ladies. Right. We know the saying. <laughs> yes, it, that is the saying. That's the saying. But at the same time, if you want to so, be. If you want to, you got to respect yourself as a person, right? I Correct. think I can, I can go to, I can go to you, Brian, right? And be like, homie, you can't even talk to your lady like that, bro. And if we have a little, little respect for one another, you're going to live, you're going to listen to me. There's yeah. a, that's, that's the way to do it. I mean, I, I don't know how hard it is for the fellas to see that. I saw Natasha on, pa on Paradise. She was talking to Ivan. She was like, Ivan, I know that's your boy. Like somebody that wasn't fucked up. And Ivan, for whatever reason, was like, he couldn't speak on it. And... I could be best friends with you, Brian, but you, you messing, you doing something wrong with Rachel. I gotta, as my boy and someone that I, I have a lot of respect for you, I have to tell you about it. Yeah, no, and I, I, me personally, I would respect you a lot for that, right? You know, yeah. I, I think I believe your opinion is important, right? So if you have something to say where it's like I'm messing up as a man, like you said, you wanna, you wanna help your brother build himself up and be the best per, be, be the best version of himself in his relationship. So you're gonna step up if he's doing something foul and let him know about himself. And you gotta let him know about himself. he should be secure enough to be Accept able to it. take that criticism and you know, really reflect on it and act accordingly. But I just think it's like a dicey situation. Like what, what would you do if it was Connor, right? Like if Connor was messing up, like what would be the order of events where obviously you wouldn't go to her, but you would go to him and let him know. But then what, like, what if he's, like, okay, so, what if he still acts a fool? So, like what if he so, keeps on doing what he's doing? So let's put, you you're talking about if it was Connor instead of Brendan, cause I don't know Brendan, like if Connor was yeah, in like Connor's your boy, Connor's yeah, yeah, your yeah, roommate. Connor, yeah, he's my boy, yeah, yeah. So if I'm gonna beat you with Connor and he does that, I'm gonna have to call him out. Like, I'm like, I'm like, homie, like, I'm gonna take him to the side, you know, cause I have respect for him. Be like, bro, what the hell are you doing? Like, that's disrespectful, homie. Like, yeah, you know, we don't do that. And I find that a lot of people, they like having yes friends, right? Friends that say yeah. yes. Like, girl, you, uh, he wrong or, all the time, or girl, or dude, she wrong, right? When sometimes you need those real friends that are gonna tell your ass off. That's yeah. the only way to grow. So I would tell Connor as well. I, I expect Connor to tell me also. Now, so what what about the situation where it's like they don't accept it? And now all of a sudden they're like, yo, I thought you were my boy. Like, what are you trying to do? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, what would happen that, that then? Can, that can happen as well. So if it's Connor, well, one, he's my roommate. So therefore, our relationship of homies is like we have a bond. You feel me? Like, And so therefore, I'm going to be able to talk to him. But in your example, if he just disagree completely, I ain't homie, that's your business, yeah. And then I'll tell them, then at that point in time, I'm done. Like, would you be like, okay, I told him, I said yeah, my I, piece, yeah, I, I, told, I let him know piece. how I feel, and then if if, I, he... if I'm on the beach and it happens, specifically yeah. specifically talking about Bachelor in Paradise, if I'm on the beach and that happens, I homie, shit, I got my little cutie over there, I'm gonna go back to her. I told you, you fucked up. 
and that's it is what it is. I'm not gonna like spend twenty through twenty two hours of the day focusing yeah. on you. You know, yeah, you gotta find you, you gotta find love too, right? Exactly. I gotta do my own thing. <laughs> if I'm on the beach and that's the case, but like in a situation with Natasha was asking Ivan, I don't care if that's Connor and she's asking me, I'm like, yo, he was fucked up in that position. I expect Connor to say you would say it. Yeah, yeah. Mike was wrong in that position. I, and at the same time, there's That's how like you get no respect from people. You don't. Yeah. Always just being. People need to know. It's like being nice is good, but to a certain extent, because being, I, I, I care more about being real. Yeah. And I care more about someone's authenticity and their trust. It's like an old Jay Z saying where he said, "Up, uh, somebody was like, they came up to him. And they was like, yo, Jay, uh, these people were talking bad about you.'" Uh, and Jay was like, "They were talking bad about me. Why would you even allow them to talk bad about me?" Right. Right. Like, why would you even allow that? If you're yeah. a real friend, you're going to tell that person off. Yep. No, no doubt. No doubt. I totally agree with you. And if Connor was Brendan in that situation and you told him and oh, like at the end of the day, face. at the end of the day, at the end of the day, there's no way you could validate what he did. Right. There's no way you could justify what he did on that beach. So yeah, you, can. you have to call it out because then people are going to be looking at you sideways. Like you said, you know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah, like, so, like, okay, you're defending those actions, so that not makes you just as culpable, but at the same time, I'm going to look at you yeah, in a different light, you, Mike. Correct, correct. So, correct. and at, at the same time, like, friends are a reflection of you, right? So if they're acting a fool out in, you know, in paradise on the beach, it's like, yo, that's your boy? Yeah. It's like, are you like that? Correct. You know what I'm saying? Are you out there here manipulating yeah, yeah, women? Yeah, now you got to defend yourself. Exactly. So it's just not a good look for everybody involved, and I think that, you know, I agree with you. You got to step up to your boy. You know, you don't violate bro code. You don't go to her at all, but you just yeah, you let your boy. You just let your boy know that he needs to handle his business. Exactly. You don't violate bro code, but at the same time, you are who you spend your time around. And so, with that, I'm gonna laugh at Connor's face. Like you, a dumbass, bro. What are you <laughs> doing out here? Like we spent a year in Austin together, and then you do this stupid stuff. You know? Yeah. And so, just confront your boy. And if we real homies, you're gonna at least listen to what I have to say about. Yeah. It. Yeah. Now, was Brendan lying to the other guys? I wasn't there, right? Yeah. But at the same time, from what we saw, and what I saw, and what we all saw before even Paradise even started, all the rumors that were circulating going around. That's all. That's what. I, that's my. That's my take on it. Like, you, you have to step up and speak up. Step up yeah. and speak up. You can't just be quiet all the time. And just, oh, lollygag. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Um, as far as my take. I just want to compare and contrast, you know, the relationships that you see on the beach. You see Brendan, you see him do the absolute worst job at communicating with these women. Like he's basically manipulating them, lying to them, to their faces. And it's really sad. But when you compare it to somebody that's in maybe a similar situation, like look at a Joe who, you know, is involved with, Kendall and Serena now, and then yeah. maybe somebody like Kenny, who has three women, uh, Demi, Mari, and Tia, I believe was in the mix. Like, I feel like Kenny, even though it is a, still a tough spot, and with Joe, it is still a tough spot. The truth will set you free at the end of the day, bro. Like, say how many times do we need, how many times do we need to say this? Like, I, I, I definitely may have been a casualty like, Brendan back in the day back in my younger years when I was young and dumb and you know what I'm saying like I was just trying to have fun and you know I didn't really I was selfish right yeah. but now it's like as you get older and you just realize like you get more mature and you're like you know what this woman is probably going to respect me and like me more if I tell her straight up that I don't want a relationship or I want to keep my options open or whatever the case may be and I feel like those two guys Joe and Kenny showed the example of how to be you know what I'm saying? They were respectful with their women. Like, okay, let me go talk to, you know, so-and-so, you know, real quick. Or, you know, just doing it the right way. You know what I'm saying? I feel like there is some type of an etiquette that you should go by on the beach. Like, for example, Brendan immediately accepted the date with Piper. Piper. Yeah. And for me, I mean, not to nitpick, but I probably would have been like, okay, before I answer you, like, I would like to go speak to Natasha. Well, he did speak to Natasha before. But he the day. said yes. He said, he said yes. I, yeah, before. I get what you're saying. Correct. You know correct. what I'm saying? Like, like, chill out, Piper. Yeah, you know, yeah. hold off. 
Yes. Let me go talk to Natasha. Like we've had a we've had a relationship uh, this whole entire time. You know, I've been telling her certain things, and you know, I mean, just the things that he would say to her. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, I want to hear from the audience. Like, leave a comment um, on our IG if you want Brendan on the podcast because Brendan also said to Piper at the end of the episode he was like, I don't know why she's still here. No, not only hear, that, but the fact that, that the fact that. You know, Natasha didn't have any prospects. Like that's for everybody up. out there, like yeah, I, I just want to send a shout out to our girl Natasha. Like she is the bomb. Like she is such a great person. Like my wife is really close with her, and like I, I just know the fact that they're so close. I know she is like a cool ass person, and she, she deserves all the love. And I'm officially starting the Natasha Bachelorette, Bachelorette. campaign yes, right yes, now, yes, yes. right Bachelorette. here, right now. Natasha, I think it would be a great season. I think she's funny. She's personable. I love her on clickbait. And I just think she would make a great Bachelorette. And she deserves to find love, especially after the bullshit that she's put up with on Paradise. Um, the conversations that I've had with Natasha offline are she's just a lovely woman. She really is. Uh, what she desires, how respectful she carries herself and of other people as well. I mean, yeah. the shit that Piper and Brendan and how they were coming at her and she was just, you know, being showing class. Oh no. The showing utmost class. class, the utmost class and composure. Yes. Because let's be real, other people in that situation would have went off the rails, right? A ratchet probably would have came out. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, out it there. like it was warranted, but the fact that she was able to keep her composure and you know, just basically see through all the bullshit. I mean, just respect to her, man. That that was a really, really classy way to to play that out. Oh, definitely. So, bro, and then Piper said, "Thanks for doing the heavy lifting." Like, but, thanks for doing the heavy lifting. That I, we've both been on the TV, right? We've both been on uh, the Bachelor. I've been on Paradise. There are things that producers can edit, and there there are things that you just flat out say it. Yeah. Yeah. You if it came out of your mouth, it. you it said just, it like there's it no way you can spin that or, you know, copy just, and paste this there. So that sounds like this. No, like you said it came out of your mouth. Yeah, just flat, flat out what it was. But I agree with you completely on your take about uh, Joe, you know, and Kenny in those situations. It's just just be honest, because from my experience, the other person is probably going to like you even more. Yeah, Absolutely. Just, like I respect the fact that this this man was honest with me. He let me know from the jump that he possibly could explore other things or he would accept dates if he was asked. And it is what it is. Now granted, there's a possibility that you may lose that person because you decided to go, but like if you're I'd rather lose somebody than do what do what was done. More. Yeah, than yeah. Do what was, exactly. I'd rather lose somebody for being honest than to be with that person, get in a relationship with that individual and get hurt down the line. Correct. It's like, how much better will you sleep at night? Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I told her exactly what was up. She decided not to stay. I wanted to explore their things. And you that's know, it. Like, I I respect her decision as well. I was I was getting my hair braided yesterday and I was talking to my, my braider and we were talking about this very same thing. And we were basically what it came down to is when you're honest to a person, all the pressure is taken off of you and you get to allow them to decide if they want to do some trifling shit or not. If they if they know that you are a bad person and you say, look, I'm a bad individual, and you say that, and I'm not Joe or not Joe or Kenny, but just saying this example, if you say I'm a bad person and that person's like, you know what? I accept it, that's their fault. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's upon them. So you're good to go. Like it's if so, if a guy it. tells a woman from the jump, hey. Uh, I got I got uh, five wives. I, I, I have f boy tendencies. Yeah. To FYI, then you know that's basically a red flag right there. And if she decides to stay, then that's on her. And then gets you know quote unquote played after like, well, did you? He really yeah, literally he told honest. you what was up. He, uh, he told you what was up. It's like it's like when I think about Future, the rapper Future for y'all don't know that boy is f boy rapper of the <laughs> millennia, right? But I honestly. I don't know why a girl would get mad at him. He just, he says every time how bad he is. He said, if you yeah. catch me cheating, I will never tell her sorry. That's a future line. This is what this man Yeah, you, does, you know right? you know what you're getting into right there. So, yes, I, mean, I think know. I think also people need to realize that you, people get mad at someone for uh, not doing what 
Kenny and Joe did because we want to have the control ourselves of knowing do we want to go into this or not. Yeah. You know, and just just give people that uh, control right there. Yeah, that's no doubt. That that's all that is. I think uh, Bruno Mars said it. The weekend has talked about it. How they're just they bad dudes. If you get with me, I'm I'm gonna I'm treat you dirty. Yeah. No, and I I just it. I mean, the strat. I mean, I guess they had a strategy beforehand. You know what right I'm saying? Like, yeah, like last as much as you can on the beach. Give your rose to whoever you can. You know, de yeah. develop a friendship only relationship. Get that rose <laughs> and wait for me to come on the beach. I mean. They didn't even try to hide it. Like, this was the worst executed strategy <laughs> in the history of Bachelor Nation. Honestly, uh -oh. like... Yo, Brendan was scratching his mic. <laughs> like, uh -oh. everything. Everything was messed up from the, the time he was lying to Natasha, basically, tell like, downplaying him and Piper's relationship. Like, oh, we just talked a little bit. We, yeah. we hung out a couple times. Like, no, everything was casual. We're not in a relationship. It's like... And you're here on the beach. So, in Natasha's eyes, he's probably like... Oh my God, you know, okay, this guy's here, obviously, so he's not with anybody. But yeah. then the second Piper gets on the beach, she's like, Brendan, do you want to go out on this date? Like, in my head, it was like, Brendan was looking at her like, you were it's maybe like, supposed we to go this. talk. You yeah. were maybe supposed to go talk yeah, yeah. to some other guys, you know what I'm saying? Like, play it off a little bit, then maybe choose me at the end. I don't know. Like, I don't know what they were thinking. And then once they were on the date, I mean, you could tell the conversation that they were having. It's like, I'm here for you. Like, yeah. I want to pick up where we left off. It's like, y'all were in a relationship. Like, Brendan, straight up. Brendan and Piper's combo. They, it's like a, it's kind of, it was kind of boring to me to watch their combo. Like, they don't have deep dialogue. And didn't Brendan say to, Nat, uh, to Natasha that he has deeper conversations with Natasha? Yeah. I mean, I, that would be like a kick in the gut if I was Piper yeah, hearing that. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? So because Piper, Piper, if you're listening, like, I, I know I saw that. Brendan clearly said that. Yeah. He said, yeah. I have deeper conversations with you, Natasha, than I do with her. But then when he spoke to Piper, it was all like, no, it's always been you and me kind of deal. So, like, that's why you're right. Like, Piper was a little perplexed in that conversation because it's like, uh, you kind of downplayed what our relationship really was. Like, she yeah. understood that they were together and they concocted this plan to hang out on the beach and get all these followers and all the reap all the benefits that come after those followers come and after you get off TV. And it, I just think it back totally backfired in their face. Well, didn't Piper also say to Brendan, thanks for playing the game. Like, thanks oh, no. for doing the heavy lifting. Yes, absolutely. Like Piper, there is blame to go to Piper as well. Like they were both in on it. No, 100%. Yeah. I just, I'm about to, I just got a little angry right quick for a second. I had to I had to pull it back in. Natasha, like, she like a sister. Don't mean don't no, just don't do that shit, bro. Like, I have no other words to say it and trying to be respectful about it like that. Just don't shit on somebody like that. Yeah. I, I mean it just it's just a like a really shitty thing to do and it it kind of shows your character you know what i'm saying like you're they don't kind of character show your facts that's yeah you're, you're your right it, it, it shows your character and you did it on such a public forum and like you were laughing and joking about it and you know with the captions on the ig post it was just wait the caption uh wait uh what did he uh, here seen? for the wrong reasons here for the wrong reasons all like and then piper said all is fair in love and war i mean here for the wrong reason like dude obviously did not know how much of an ass he was going to look like on tv you know what I'm saying? And like, if yeah. he was here, listen, Brendan, you I asked the Brandon question. I, I want, want Brandon, Brandon too. On. Like, Brendan, no disrespect, bro. We don't know you personally. Talk. We don't yeah. know you personally. But at the same time, you need to take your lumps right now because what we saw and there was no ifs, ands, or buts about it with the editing and all that stuff. Like, you said what you said. You acted the way you acted. And you need to answer for that. You know what I'm saying? And what we would like is to give you essentially an open forum to come on and say, say your piece, you know what I'm saying? Because right now it doesn't look good. So no. I feel like you need some type of an outlet to, you know, whether it's apologize, uh, you know, explain yourself in a more detailed manner. I don't know what it is, but we welcome you on here, bro. We will give you the space for it. And will we hold your feet to the fire a little bit? Yeah, like I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell him. Of course, <laughs> I'm gonna tell him everything that I've said on today's podcast. I'm gonna say it to his face, and you know, I just hope he's ready for that. Uh, Brendan, homie, I want you to come on and pod. We've never spoken before, but 
you need to speak on this. You are not going to like come on here, uh, shit talk and downplay the things that you did to my sis and just be getting away with it. I do want to say at the same time, though, it kind of a part of me didn't even want to talk about this. And the reason I don't want to talk about it is because we've talked about in the past when a lot of people go against a couple. It almost like strengthens their bond, Yeah, strengthens the bond. Yeah. And I don't want to because they also talked about. Oh, you know, we were in U.S. Weekly and things like this. Like this is the stuff that they kind of want to be talked about. Based on this what is, I saw this is, on the show. This is the Bachelor world in 2021. I mean, this yeah. is like a microcosm of it. They came on for followers to be influencers after the fact. And like, like 80,000 plus followers you've lost, bro. And now Natasha's like skyrocketing with her followers. I mean, literally the antithesis, the opposite of what you wanted happened. <laughs> like that's, yo, yo, that's this, karma. That's karma, Mike. Yo, this is what we call Instagram, Bonnie and Clyde. <laughs> you know. That's yeah. what this is right here. But so, I think the follower stuff, they could have came on and been honest. They could have yeah. came on and been honest. Brendan could have been like, look, I want the IG followers. You feel me? He could have been honest, been funny with it. But the, the part that gets me is that you you dragged my girl. Yeah, yeah. Like you dragged an innocent, beautiful person into your web of lies. He dragged right? Pink Starburst. Yeah, I mean, and like, Natasha, like of all the people, Natasha, she's like the sweetest soul. And it's 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 just a shame how she was treated on on such a public forum. And that's, you know, it's like you could tell, like you could like you could tell by the reaction. And that's another thing. Is he apologizing now? Because after losing 80,000 followers, like though, just this is my perception based off what I what I saw and based the, at the way he was talking, if he maybe loses 5,000 followers. Does he have that same energy of putting up an apology, apologizing to Natasha, or does he stand strong with his convictions of what he was telling her on the show? You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like is this a real, like, you know, I'm, I mean, this is the history of Bachelor Nation uh, uh, apologies, right? It's like, yes, do it you is. do it after the fact? Like after you get the backlash or do, 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 you, do you get do in front of it? it got, do you do it because it got so much attention? Correct. You're like, oh, you're like, oh, shit. I actually, it's not going to where I got to apologize about it now. You know? Yeah, that's, exactly. That, that, that's what it is right there. And I mean, I want, like, that. those are the types of things that I want to talk to Brendan about. I want to ask Brendan straight to his face, like, what were you thinking, bro? Like, when, like, did you come up with this uh, plot? Like, what, like, explain yourself. Like, try to <laughs> yeah. make sense of this because A part there's, of only, there's only one way we could look at this. Based Yo, on the way everything happened. But today we got Kendall on the pod, though. So I definitely. I want to get her feedback. I want to get her feedback. I mean, she I was saw there. her and Joe. Uh, it, Kendall was uh, watching her. I, I just wanted to hug her when she was talking to Joe on the day beds and stuff, man. So I definitely want to talk to Kendall about her situation with Joe, her take on the Brendan Piper, and just see how our girl is doing. So, Kendall, welcome to the stage. I mean, this is my first interview post Paradise, and uh, it was a really difficult experience for me so i think talking about it is going to be hard it, it feels like it hasn't been that long since everything happened mm. so and kendall obviously we're going to talk about paradise um we hear joe side on clickbait but we wanted to talk to you about joining paradise first off like what made you decide to go on this season so initially i was thinking that I knew that Joe probably would be going on the show because he was single and he's actively like a part of like the bachelor world. So um, I knew that was a potential. So um, when I went on, my initial thought was I wasn't interested in getting back in a relationship with Joe because if I wanted to, I would have done that the year and a half that we were broken up and uh, I didn't want to do it publicly in front of everybody. Um, so my goal was to get closure and then to kind of, try to find love on the beach like I did before. And because we had been broken up so long, I thought it would be a lot easier uh, than it was. And it was, it kind of caught me by surprise on how crazy it was. Sorry, Pistachio's crying with me. I was like, <laughs> what is good. that noise? I know I, I know I hear something. I'm like, I hear, okay. okay. Um, you know, he's like, oh, don't talk about it, mom. Pistachio has your back. He does. Kendall, yeah. did you did you and Joe talk? I mean, you mentioned that you guys were broken up for about a year and a half. Like, mm -hmm. did you guys have any communication whatsoever prior to going on the beach? 
Um, yeah, definitely. Um, I think when we broke up or announced that we had broken up, um, we were still kind of figuring out things because the main reason why we broke up was had large part to do with logistics. I mean, of course, there was other reasons why it wasn't just moving to Chicago um, or him staying in L.A., but um, we still, at least I still, really loved and cared about Joe like in that way. So I think we were trying to figure out like how could we make this work? Is there like a world where this can work? And um, after meeting up those few times, I think we always either like avoided the conversation and kind of went right back into relationship mode. Mm -hmm. um, so there never really was like that kind of closure where I saw Joe as purely just a friend because um, we were, whenever we met up, we're like, we're back, to, not like back together, but it just felt like we were. It felt, so. it felt right. Yeah, I mean, it just felt easy. I mean, we've always had comfort in each other. I always say that, like our relationship, we really supported each other in a lot of different ways. And um, going through things publicly is hard. And so uh, we depended on each other for like how difficult that was. Um, yeah, and I think we both definitely tried to move on. I, I got to a certain point where I was in my mind thinking, there's no way right now that we can make a relationship work and I'm okay with that. And so I wouldn't have gone on Paradise if I didn't have that mentality. So you guys were together for two years. A year and a half. Uh, no, nearly two years. Yeah. Okay. And then you guys I have mean, been broken up for eighteen months, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you, would you do long distance dating again? Um, just with anyone in general. Yeah. Or I think I would be okay with doing long distance dating if it if eventually we can come to a place where we are together. Um, I'm extremely close to my family. I have a twin sister who's literally the love of my life, and um, so being away from my family is um something that i it is like almost a deal breaker for me and what? i would yeah no no go ahead i'm sorry i want to hear i want to finish that or finish that thought um no i mean it's just but um it's not that's not to say that i would never try moving somewhere for someone or go anywhere else i think that there would have to be um a lot would have to happen in order for me to feel comfortable in that way because I, I see myself as very independent like i like to have my own thing going on i don't like to fully depend on my significant other like i want to have a uh, job, family, like a community, something you still want that your I can own have. Identity. Exactly. And losing my identity completely and moving across the country to a place that's very different um, than LA was intimidating for me. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately, that was kind of like what caused us. So yeah. basically, you're mentioning logistics and deal breakers. And I know you mentioned, or I don't know if it was Joe that mentioned on the show, that you quote unquote didn't want to move for a man. So it's like, I guess, mm -hmm. help me understand, because w what do you say to the people out there who say, well, if they really loved each other, they would make it work. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously relationships moving forward into an engagement or marriage are very serious. They're they're going to compromise. They're going to they're going to do whatever it takes to be together. And it just seems like mm -hmm. you're in your your camp where you're like, I'm not leaving L.A. and he's in his camp where he's not leaving Chicago. And it's like, it, yeah. it kind of sucks, right? It's a shame. Like, it seems like you have so much love for each other, but this one thing is is preventing things from moving forward. Yeah, it was, it was something where um, early on in our relationship, an instance happened where I was like, you know, because of how I feel right now, I don't ever foresee a future in Chicago. Like, you have to be okay with that. Um, and he was. Um, and it's, and it, for me, it's like, it's okay. If you change your mind, it's okay. If that's not okay with you and it's okay. One minute people change all the time. They evolve. That's a conversation to have, you know? Yeah. And so when it came to revisiting that conversation, um, we didn't agree and it didn't make sense anymore. And I, I don't yeah. think there was any animosity or, um, hate or anything. It was kind of just like, this is where I foresee my future. And this is where I, I can't foresee my future. And so that's what made breaking up so hard. And I think that's what prolonged like having the closure that at least I needed. I don't want to speak for him. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, would, I know it was tough in my relationship. We were living by coastal for about six months and you know, it's a situation where I had to sacrifice my grand and I, I was coming to LA, which mm -hmm. I mean, who doesn't love LA? Right. But right? <laughs> I guess, I guess it's a, it's a situation where it's like, where, like, would you going to Chicago? Like, I feel like if I was Joe, I would want to help you flourish in whatever way possible. Like, 
are you going to be comfortable here? Are you going to mm -hmm. be able to work here? Things like that. Or like, so whoever can adapt in the other city, I think like that's, that was the move to make. But again, you know, that mm -hmm. that's yeah. how you guys feel. And it's like, I can't, you know, get in the middle of your relationship. That was just kind of like unique to me. And that's how like yeah. I justified in my head. It's like, okay, I could practice in California. So it's not yeah. too big of an issue for me to go to California because that's where she, all her work is. So yeah, it's like, it would only exactly. make sense and not have her come to Miami because mm -hmm. she'd be miserable and out of work there. So mm -hmm. it was easy for me, but I could see where it's like, you have your family, your whole life, your job, like you don't see that in Chicago and him vice versa. You know, it's really tough. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I, 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 I think we tried our best to make it so, cause we had like developed a little life in LA. He was on dancing with the stars. So I had a lot of friends that were in that world. And so, you know, um, I think it was really good until it wasn't. You had mentioned, I heard you say on Ben and Ashley's podcast that you wouldn't come on if Joe was there, yeah. uh, but you went on, you knew he was going to go on. Like what ultimately changed your mind? Um, I, I still kind of ask myself that a lot because in that moment, it, I was pretty a hundred percent sure that I wouldn't want to put myself in that situation. It seemed kind of like it would be really difficult. And yeah. um, it proved to be really difficult, but something about a, something, I, I decided to go literally last minute. Um, and I don't know exactly why, but I felt like something wasn't done. I needed some form of closure, some sort of conversation with him. We hadn't really spoken or communicated in a while. And um, the way that I view love is I'm not the kind of person that can either love someone or not. It's more kind of like a, there's layers of love. And I've always had a lot of love for Joe and I it just never really felt like it just never felt like I can fully just say okay I can step away from this and be okay with never having a conversation again like I, and I also am not the kind of person that if he's in a relationship or he's trying to pursue something with someone else I don't want to get in the way so I knew that him being on paradise would mean that he would develop a relationship potentially and um, I wanted to be respectful and have that conversation with him before like that was a potential. I think you guys were both pretty respectful uh, in regards to uh, Serena. And so, you know, kudos to you, kudos oh, to yeah. Joe for handling that situation well. Uh, is there, talking about, you know, Joe and dating other people, is there anyone else that you're interested in on the beach? So going on the beach, um, before I went, there were people that I wanted to romantically pursue, I had curiosity for. Um, and so Ivan was one of those people. And so I was actually really excited to meet him and get to know him. He kind of has a similar, similar interest to myself, uh, with like science and engineering and stuff. So, um, we like really hit it off. I think ultimately I feel like trying to pursue a relationship while having my ex on the beach, uh, was really difficult for me. I think the one thing that Joe had was that he was able to, start a relationship with Serena, kind of pursue that before I came on. Yeah. And, um, but he kind of went through it too, you know, from what I've heard. Like, um, I haven't really been doing a lot of watching of this season just because it's hard to watch. Um, but from what I've heard, it was difficult for him in the beginning. He was spiraling. And then, you know, by the time I went on, I was kind of going through that same thing. Where I was like, dang, there's like so much memory. There's so many memories here. There's so much that happened here. And my ex is here. And, you know, we didn't break up because I hate him. Like, he's a good person. And so I was really battling those emotions. And um, I just didn't have the luxury of being able to kind of develop something away from him. But did you think that you could possibly develop that with somebody? Like, if somebody asked you out on a date, would you have gone? Like, if Ivan would have asked you out on a date, would you have gone? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I definitely wanted, and I think it probably would have been better if I um, had an opportunity to go on a date and to get off the beach and to not be faced with um, just like all those memories of my ex. Whenever you go on a date, you're kind of away from that situation. Yeah. Um, but I think out of mind. exactly. I mean, there were opportunities to go on dates, and by then I had kind of spiraled in my mind to a point where I. Um, yeah, I just kept comparing everything to like our relationship that we had, so. I mean, that's, honestly, you handled that situation 10 times better than I would have. You are right now, I could not imagine being in love with someone, we're not together and we're both on the same beach and they're yeah. with someone else. So 
I just want to hug you right now, give you a virtual hug. I mean, the thing that I think is so great about something like being a part of Paradise is that it's so extremely real. And in that, like I was being on the beach, it was like the most vulnerable I've ever been um, it, 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 with a camera in my face. Like I was just not used to having that much intense like history, like painful history, and then having to face like people, you know? And so um, I think I was in my head a lot and I don't really think I gave things a chance that I should have just because I was spiraling in my own way. I mean, so, like, you said, yeah. like you said, you were on that same beach, those same steps, yeah. you know, same uh, day bed, same everything. Like, yeah. So we completely yeah. understand. I, I think that you're, you're showing grace and you're being powerful right now. Uh, and appreciate that, you know, give yourself a pat on the back because I wouldn't be able to do it flat out. Would not have been able to. I don't know about you, Brian. I yeah. cannot do something like that. But I don't want to, you know, harp on that too long. I don't want to have you crying. You know, you're going to start making me cry as well. What There's is something in my eye. I'm not crying. I've been crying. I, I, I cry all the time. It's super fun. I love crying. Um, <laughs> it's an emotional person. I love something watching wrong that. With that. Yeah. No, it's I mean, it's just fun. like reliving everything, like reliving everything that like the show's airing. I haven't really watched it, but even not watching it. You still get bits and pieces of everything that's going on. People send you things, you get comments. So my parents are watching it. So I get like little tidbits of things. Um, and it's kind of like you have to almost relive things again, you know, and uh, it's freaking sucks. Like it's, it's hard, you know, so um, it's, 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 I think it's part of where I am now um, is kind of like processing through everything again. And uh, it's fun. Sometimes it's not fun. I'm really fortunate to have the strength of my family, which is something like part of the reason why I love being near them. So what did you learn from the experience? Like, I mean, did you, do you feel like you've grown from going through that? Oh, tremendously. I feel like I learned a lot about, hmm. I think I learned a lot about um, my own strength, you know, because when you're in paradise, you're by yourself, really. You, you don't have your friends or family to vent to. I mean, there are friends that I have on the beach. Everyone's going through their own thing. There's always yeah. many dramas going on at the same time. And so for me, I really internalized a lot of my pain. I, I tried not to um, affect other people just because I knew that they were going through their own thing. Um, and I think part of that was good and I learned how to be strong within myself, but then at times I felt like it would have really benefited for me to be vulnerable with other people um, instead of just like holding it within myself. Like I did a lot of going to the bathroom and crying on my own, which, you know, I don't know. Um, I think I just kind of didn't really know how to handle it. And um, yeah, well, I don't know. I'm still kind of processing it. So if, if, if that conversation that you and Joe had would have went well, and, it and let's say it went into a different direction to where you guys started talking again, would you? And then do you think that you guys would have again fell into the same old, I don't want to say trap, but same things you guys have done in the mm -hmm. past? Or were no, that comp yeah, initially I thought that conversation was going to be a lot easier. And I think what I didn't expect is I didn't expect to walk down the beach and then to have a conversation with Joe and to be faced with a completely different Joe that I'm used to. Because how can he be, we be the same way that we were? We just can't. It wouldn't have been appropriate. How was he different? So I just felt like um, there were certain things we couldn't express, couldn't talk about. It wasn't really the closed door talk I expected. I don't really think I got a lot of answers from it. Um, it was kind of like, this is weird and it's going to be weird. And... <laughs> Um, I, I was just expecting there to be so much more vulnerability and openness and like understanding of where we were, like how this was. And it, I felt kind of like, understandably, um, he wasn't giving as much of, him, of himself to me that I was used to. Like our relationship was always really open, really vulnerable, really communicative. And um, I didn't really get any of that. So uh, I, I understand why it was just a completely different reality. Um, and so that first talk kind of just like shocked me and made the rest of paradise really difficult. And, um, I, when I walked down, I, I wasn't expecting to have feelings come up again. You know, I was expecting it to be kind of more so cut and dry. Like we've tried this, we've done this before. Um, we know that we, tr at least we know we tried, we want happiness for each other. We want to move on. Um, 
And, and I wanted that for him. And I literally actively avoided him pretty much the entire time that I was there because I, I didn't really? want to get in the way of him developing something with someone else. Like uh, that's just not, I wasn't interested in that because so I knew great. that we had really tried and, and Serena's great. Like there's nothing bad to say about Serena. Like yeah. she was so sweet, so respectful as well. It was, it was an awkward situation. Um, and I just didn't expect it to be as weird as it was. So you don't, you don't have to answer, but you said something there. You said, uh, you guys couldn't talk about some of the things. What mm -hmm. were some of the things, if I may? Um, you know, I think like when you go through breakups with people, like it's never just one thing. You know, there's always a lot of reasons why things don't work and little, you know, how it happened, it happened after like, you know, it, it, gets, it does get messy because breakups are kind of just like that. Um, and we've always maintained respect for each other. But um, for me, like I kind of like to keep more stuff private just because it's just respecting who we are like in a public space ultimately the biggest reason was logistics and it was not wanting to live in the same area in a, you know and so that was what ultimately broke us up so got you got you and you i love what you said i don't know if you i was, I was smiling when you said it you said you're not the type of person that's like i love you or i don't love you there's layers of love i've never heard that before mm -hmm. but i adore mm -hmm the way you said that. Do you feel that you're at a point or at a, at a space to where you can be completely open with your feelings and your heart to someone else? Um, yeah, completely. I, I'm, for me, um, I wouldn't have walked down the stairs on that beach if I didn't feel like I was ready. I think it was being in that situation and being around him that made it really difficult for me to pursue a relationship there but with where I am in with where I am now like I I feel excited to find something I mean it's been a while Joe and I have been broken up for a while and I'm always gonna have feelings I'm always gonna have a certain element of love for him and it's always gonna be hard for me to talk about because it was a hard thing to do I don't think it's a I don't think being faced with your ex is a normal thing to do you know and have to watch each other try I to have move done on it. like I couldn't do unless it that's, maybe. Tough. that's tough so I, mean, I, I you know I, I yeah so, I mean, obviously we can't spoil the ending. So do you, saying how you feel right now, do you feel like you got that closure that you were looking for at the end of the day? I do. I feel like I definitely got a lot of answers, 100%. I feel like I, um, I think people change over time. And who Joe and I were when we were, our, it, when we were in a relationship, we're not those same people anymore. You know, I've grown, he's grown. And I think with who we are right now, um, I think I have closure in where I am right now. So if that makes sense. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, because at the end of the day, I feel like you need that closure in order for you to, like Mike said, be able to open up your heart to somebody else. Because at the end of the day, if you're still caught up in that previous relationship, you know, moving forward with somebody is, is, is just not going to work. How It'll do you be a lot more yeah. difficult, at least. I don't know if closure mm -hmm. is something that we all get in a, in a relationship ending. Uh, I, I know for myself, I didn't have that in, in the past. And so uh, I think any closure is good closure, you know, if you can get anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that the two of you got to, the two of you were able to do that. But Kendall, what is, where are you at in life right now? What's going on for you right now? Cause I don't want to just talk about your, your past with this guy, with this curly hair who has a horrible accent, you know, like, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know, I, I love, I love you. I can talk shit to him. Like, what? <laughs> what's going on in your life? What's new for you? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you up I to? I feel like, yeah, I'm actually really excited with where I am. Um, I'm in a place right now where I'm diving more so into my passions. Like, I'm really into like science, entomology, zoology, like the whole science world, and um, I've been really kind of diving into that community. Um, and I have like a couple of projects that I'm really excited about that are gonna be coming out soon with Ooh. within that world. So, so yeah, I I feel like um, I just feel lucky to be able to um, focus my energy on something that I'm so passionate about. I think the one thing that I've learned is that if you um, share what you love and what you're passionate about, like things find you. You know, and uh, dropping dimes a day. I love it. <laughs> Say it again, baby. I love that right there. 
Yes. Love what you do and everybody. everything will come back to you. Yes. So let's bring it back to paradise, Kendall, but let's not talk about your situation. Let's talk about all yeah. the drama that's going on in Bachelor Nation right now. Oh, Obviously yeah. with Brendan and Piper and to a, a, another extent, uh, Chris and Alana, what is your take on the whole situation? Um, so I haven't uh, watched too much of it, but I definitely hear of a lot of things that are going down. Um, I think what's interesting, that's what sets this season of Paradise apart from a lot of other seasons is that there was not only time for people to get to know each other and to develop relationships off of the show, um, but I think social media is something that's growing as a part of what Bachelor is. I think a lot of people going on the show know that you're going, your face is going to be out there and that means you can build a brand to some capacity. Um, and unfortunately, I think people are, were really like taking advantage of that in paradise. So it was a combination of two things that made it more of a toxic environment than I remember it when we were on. Um, mm. There was a lot of kind of like plans and inner workings and anyone who's been on any Bachelor show um, knows that things are always going to come out. You know, you can only hide things works. for so long. <laughs> yeah, and it was pretty obvious that people knew each other and that there were relationships that like, everyone's like met someone there. Um, so it was cool because there was like a strong friendships there, but it was also like, oh, this is definitely, you guys have definitely slept together before, <laughs> <laughs> before coming on the beach. Like that's apparent, so yeah. I definitely saw that. Do you find that if you were dating somebody and they're like, yo, I kind of want to like date you, but I want to get these followers. How would you respond to them saying that? Mm, I mean, I, I have like dated, not, I have dated people like post Joe and, you know, I've tried yeah. to move on in my own way. And the way I deal with it is like, I'm not very public at all about who I date, how long I've dated anything. I don't really talk about it publicly because, um, I think that I think before I'm public for a relationship, I want to really feel sturdy and strong in what it is. So someone who wants to date me for that is is not going to get the clout. I'm going to have to build that trust and have a really strong foundation before I'm ready to like expose any anything with romantically that's going on in my life. So, um, so yeah, that's a no go for me. <laughs> we were talking. And we were talking, uh, we actually had a couple of hot takes uh, before we brought you on. And I want to get your take on those. Um, like for me, I was, I'm always perplexed at us men making things difficult for ourselves in terms of, you know, looking at a situation like Brendan, you know, basically getting caught up in his web of lies. I know what Kendall's going to say, bro. I know And her. just like versus <laughs> I'm going to maybe use somebody like Kenny who maybe is a little bit more open and divulges everything from the get-go. Like, hey, this is where I stand. I'm open to other things. Like he makes it clear to the to the woman that like where he stands. So at the end of the day, if she still decides to latch onto that person and mm -hmm. possibly gets hurt, he basically let her know that ahead of time, right? Or he that there was a possibility of that. But like when guys lie, it's like, why? The truth will set you free. Like sometimes I feel Mike mm -hmm. and I agree that women sometimes like you more and respect you more when you're open and honest, right? Yeah. How do you feel about that? My rule is that I want to be the first person to call myself out, always. So mm -hmm. whenever I feel like I've done something wrong, I got to beat people to the punch. I'm like, I have to admit my own fault first because, um, and I think it causes a lot more self-reflection. You know, I think that I'm the kind of person that whenever I, I really am really bad at lying. My heart is on my sleeve, obviously. I cry, I, you know. Um, and when it comes to that, I feel like it's not fair to give someone a certain impression of yourself that's not genuine because mm. why would long-term that doesn't last? You know, long-term it's like you're going to end up being like, oh, you're not who I thought you were. And why am I with someone that I, you know, is not initially what I was attracted to, you know? and. I always feel like when it comes to, I always try to be just kind of like blatantly myself because then I know I'm attracting someone that likes me for me. Yes. You know, Amen. I like weird things. I mean, <laughs> weird, you know, I, I like things that are maybe not as conventional. Um, and so I'm like, you have to know all about this all ahead of time and how I am. And if 
that's cool with you and we can like, you know, connect on certain things, like that's, that's run and go for it. But, um, but yeah, if not, I'm like, why, why pretend, um, you're just kind of like, you're living someone else's life is what you're doing. You know, you're, yeah. you're trying to be someone else, live someone else's life. It's like, I can't live vicariously through someone else. I would rather be my, who I am. Yeah. Totally get that. Well, Kendall, thank you so much for being on today. You're powerful. You're strong. You're courageous and really respectful uh, to Joe. And I think honestly, a lot of us can watch him. Uh, you're you a class act personified. I truly feel thank that you. way. So I thank you for that. having you on. <laughs> Thank you so much. It means a lot. Bro, I loved having Kendall on. She was talking about there's different, not there's different layers of love. That to me, the way she said that was just so profound. I love the way she said it and the way she broke it down. And seriously, man, the way she handled the Joe and Serena situation, uh, kudos, 100% kudos to her for that. I loved having her, man. Um, I, 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 I'm kind of like a little biased to Joe and Kendall. Like, I feel like I love them so much together. Like, I always love them as a couple. And, you know, it's, it's a shame at the end of the day that, you know, they, they couldn't make things work. But I think they're both two great individuals. And, you know, I wish them nothing but the best. And I, I believe from what, what we heard today is that she's ready to move on and she's ready to date other people, which I believe is a positive for her. And, you know, I'm just glad that she was able to solve whatever issues they had on the beach and just be able to move forward now and in real in reality she i hate that they broke up for the record but i love that this conversation got brought up to the forefront because when i think about this show right if i were to ever do something like this again in the future if i was you know given that opportunity or whatever i think about logistics that's like one of yeah. the top three things that come to my mind that's and no one's the, never talked about it bro you'll have conversation like hypothetical you're the bachelor whoever your top four are or even more than that that's what i'm gonna talk about yeah like that's the things i'm gonna like, talk about yo you live here i live here what's up like once we get out of this bubble what are we yeah, doing like real life you know you, you know. coming to me am i going to you like yeah. what's the deal so yeah I, I i haven't seen that conversation with within the show and so i'm just glad that i hate that you know that they broke up um they aren't together but i love that this conversation was brought up because this is things that people have to talk about like that's yeah. something I legit always think about when I sit back and watch. I'm like, now your ass live in Wisconsin and you live in Texas, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I, that really hit home with me because like Rachel and I were going kind of through something similar. I mean, we've lived in Dallas. We lived in Miami. You know, I like Dallas. She liked Miami. But, you know, the other hey, person was yes. like more thrilled. You know, the person that where their hometown was, that, that person was the one that was more thrilled with it. You know, the other one was just like, okay, you know, I love you and I'm, we're here. But then we chose a spot like L.A. You know, it's kind of like mutual. We both want to be here. This is where, you know, she's going to thrive the most. And I feel like I'm going to thrive. So it was, it was a perfect situation. So it's not ideal. It, it, it's ideal compared to what they had to go through. I mean, Chicago and L.A., both big cities, but kind of different in a way. So, you know, it's, it's just tough. But yeah, I no, wish Kendall definitely. nothing but the best. Only, only the best for her. Only the best for her. But... And of course, all of our listeners, thank you for tuning into today's episode. You know, we always love to hear your opinions, your stories, and your insights. So please don't forget to like, comment, share, follow, message us on social at Talking It Out BN on IG and Bachelor Nation Pods on Facebook and Twitter. And as always, don't forget to hit the subscribe on our podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you're listening to right now. And baby, I ain't going to tell you no more. Don't DM me no more until you hit that follow. I love you.